everyone welcome and thank you so much for watching this video I wanted to share with you some uh, news about my brushes so I have this new series called golden 2 these are squirrel synthetic brushes I've been working on these brushes for the last three years and I wanted to create a vegan cruelty free brushes so no no animals have been hurt to create these brushes the hair is synthetic so it's a special synthetic fiber that mimics the real squirrel hair they are softer but they are also snap back and that point stays like this so you always have this fine point but this is the flat brush it's the same hair as this one it's a softer brush you always want to actually have a softer brush when you wet the paper and then when you apply colors with on wet so these are golden too and they're available in my Etsy shop so I just diluted colors with water to a consistency of heavy cream like ratio basically flat three quarter size brush and the first thing I'm gonna do is wet the paper so I'm gonna wet the paper I'm forgetting about these rocks for now it's not important because they're gonna be darker anyway so I also have sketch lines for the water so it's easier for me to kind of visualize where I'm going to place the strokes I think I'm pretty good with it this is pretty wet so the first thing is cobalt blue, phthalo blue uh, and quinacridone red and this is a little deep color but it will dry it would dry uh, more pale. This is watercolors. Watercolors always dry more pale than when we fir first see them when they're wet like this. So this will dry pale. But I'll continue moving. And again, I don't care about these rocks right now. I can go over them because they're going to be darker anyway. Right now, I just want to focus on the applying colors towards my clouds. So the clouds have a nice shape and depth to them. I did leave area small here, small area here for the cloud as well. So this one is like I normally actually create clouds. Here I want them a little differently this time. There you go. That's underneath because I want to add a little color towards the clouds. So first, before I do that actually, I want a little more color from the top to make the sky on top a little richer, the blues. So you can go back as long as the area is still wet and I'm grabbing now my softer so this is the round 8 golden 2 and this is a mix of that rose sienna queen red and follow blue and you can add these clouds like this too like the color underneath that cloud just to make it a little darker if you want to small amount you don't need much just to give it some like dimension, I suppose, to those clouds. And then we can go back to soften some of these edges too. Just like that. And if I want to add a little more towards the sky, I can like create like lines going through. There you go. This one, this is like a follow blue with the quin red. So this way I have a little more color in my sky. And now what I need to do is clean this brush. This is a dirty brush, a three quarter size brush I had. And I need to re-wet the bottom a little bit because I don't have enough time. So I want to start working on the bottom part. So you want to start with like undertones. So let's grab that cobalt green, cobalt blue, follow blue. And let's add these colors towards the water here. Again, this is cobalt green, cobalt blue. Some of the raw sienna would be nice too. Especially on top. There you go. But I want to go back um, and add more of that cobalt blue with follow blue and cobalt blue, cobalt green. That's what it is. And this is much darker now. And it will get a little darker because I'm still not done adding colors. I'm using the shape of this brush to actually spread the colors. You want to find those waves. That's why it's important to actually have a sketch. But at this point, I can't even see it when I have it here. But as long as 
as long as I can find them somehow to have that shape of water. And you also want to go back and retouch these. So you want to go back and retouch these. So heavy cream-like ratio. And at this point, I'm also grabbing royal blue. So this is also royal blue. Ideally, like I want to actually do this with one layer. I don't want to add another layer. That's just my preference. I don't want to mess with it. Um, the thing is when you re-wet the area like this, you activate the colors because they're so rich. Not all colors are easy to lift, of course, it depends. But from my experience, like these colors, they will lift easily and I don't want to mess with it. I just want this to nicely dry and smoothly dry. So now when I add colors, it's heavy cream-like ratio. And I'm adding now also indigo and heavy cream like ratio, indigo, royal blue, follow blue, all the colors that I've used for the water. And the darkest darks will be on the bottom. So everything else like that way will be lighter. So that's important to remember. The closer you get towards these rocks, the, the smaller those lines on the water will be. And I can switch my brushes so I can get rid of this flat three-quarter brush, my wonderful flat three-quarter golden chip, and then grab the round eight. And now, heavy cream-like ratio, indigo, royal blue, and some of that follow blue too. And you can just shape them even more, the water, if you want to. So if there's time too, because um, the paper's drying. But you can still shape the water very nicely if you want to. And this is a good timing. It's very good timing because the, the paint is settling. The water is settling on the paper. The paper's drying. And then let's just walk away from it and let it dry. And that's it, at least for now. So now that my layer has dried, or all this has dried, let's start working on those rocks. So I have round eight golden toothbrush. I'm going to wet both of these rocks at the same time. So like I said earlier, it didn't matter that we uh, painted over with some blues from the sky because the rocks are way darker and they need some undertone color in there anyway. So you need some undertones. So when you have like a, a light layer, it really doesn't matter when you have like the dark object that you're gonna be working on later. So there's the two rocks, I just wetted them. I'm gonna start with the raw sienna here. So I have some raw sienna. And again, think about it, like where are you placing these colors? And you can mix a little bit of raw sienna, let's say with quin red. My colors are really dirty, as a matter of fact. Uh, I should probably clean it, but it's okay. I'm gonna live with it. This is a little bit of that yellow. So I'm also adding some yellow. After this painting, I'm going to clean my palette, that's for sure. So some yellow undertones for the green vegetation on those rocks. And then uh, let's see, some yellow ochre again. Maybe here. That's why like I'm not just going across the whole thing. I'm choosing the areas where I want to add colors. There you go. Perfect. Here. And then let's add some burnt sienna. And some blended brown. And then in a second we can add, start adding the sub green. There we go. Okay. 
And now I'm thinking to start adding that sub green. I'm using the tip of my brush to shape these two, these rocks. So now I am grabbing sub green. And you know what? I'm going to clean this brush because I need some yellow undertones for the green over here, for example. Just so the, the, the green looks better this way. So now I'm cleaning this brush again and I'm grabbing sub green. Sub green. So there's sub green. And with the tip of my brush, I am painting some some plants, whatever that is. It's getting late on my side here. Because again, I'm painting it. This is at nighttime. I normally paint during the day, but sometimes you have kids, um, you know, like with toddlers, uh, sometimes like they have tough days and today she had a bit of a tougher day. So I couldn't really work that much because she was very needy. She needed me a lot. And so I couldn't really focus on painting. I was interrupted a million times, <laughs> which is okay. Uh, it's just that now I'm painting instead of like during the day when I like to paint during the day more than at nighttime because I'm a morning person basically. And here, uh, this is now Van Dyke Brown with that sapphire green. And the tip of this, these rocks, like you don't want it to be like straight or perfect. And that's because you have that vegetation there and you want to kind of show it. And now another thing is we have like a shadow on the bottom of it. So it would be a good idea to add heavy cream like ratio. So when we paint uh, wet on wet, we want to use actually the ratio between water and paint, heavy cream like ratio. I call it heavy cream like ratio. I do have a video on my channel if you're interested and in those ratios, like how I refer to it. And heavy cream, so think of dairy. And it will make more sense to you if you can picture it that way. So I just added more color there on the bottom. And I just want to separate these two. So just to add a little more shadow between the two. That would look prettier. I can come back to it and I can do something more to it if I want to. But I don't want to spend too much time on it. Another important thing when we have a landscape, seascape like this one, is to paint these reflections on the water. So if you need a sketch, then go ahead and, and just make a sketch for these um, spots. So I'm not going to do the sketch. I'm just um, showing you like the idea what you can do. And first, like, let's see, there's like a raw sienna almost with a burnt sienna. And I'm doing this milk-like ratio because I'm going to paint wet on dry. And I'm finding these areas. And over that, we'll go over again and create more, like another layer. This is just like the first layer. And you want to go, when you add these spots, you want to go towards the lightest parts. So between these kind of waves, if that makes sense. Towards the lightest parts. And they are like smooth in a way, if you think about it. These lines are actually smooth. So something like this. And then um, the closer you get towards the rocks, like then the smaller or shorter they become, right? But they're still pretty spread out in the middle section here. So something like this. And let's see, I just finished working on this bird series for Patron. Well, actually, we are in the middle of it because I've already been posting. And the next thing I'm working on is a, a landscape series, which is very important too. And in the meantime, I can paint the sides here. We have like a island there, I'd say. So I'm just grabbing that. Oh, uh, this is, I guess this is follow or cobalt blue mostly with cobalt green. And talking about the different subjects, I do recommend to to really try different things and 
um, not to hang on to that one subject only. So you continue growing as an artist. So you feel comfortable. Like um, it's it's also like if you feel like painting something else, like you have that confidence right away. Like oh, I know how to do this. I've painted this before. Versus uh, just hanging on to one subject only. I think it's important. But again, this is just my opinion. So here I'm adding actually Van Dyke, not Van Dyke Brown, Indigo towards the top. There you go. So now it looks like there's some kind of an island or something, but I think I'm gonna add some of that Van Dyke brown there too. Because otherwise it looks like, a, I don't know, <laughs> it looks like water. <laughs> so I need some dark from the top, darks. All right. And now I'm just waiting for one thing and it's for this to add another layer. I guess I could start doing it now. So this is like the indigo slash Van Dyke Brown slash Sap Green. I know it's like a weird mix, but I need the darks. And mostly I suppose it needs to be also like the Burnt Sienna because now I'm looking at it more. And I'm gonna start in the back there because these are like drier. And just some of them, just to pick some of them. I think I want more like of that Burnt Sienna slash Van Dyke Brown, mostly. And just towards the edges. And this should be dry when you're adding these. This is too wet, but this one is okay. So something like that. I do want to add some indigo next to it too, so it's not too light. But it looks better like this. When we add that second layer, wet on dry. And then as I'm getting closer, I also want to accent some of these. So just using the tip of my golden tube brush. And here, this is way darker, but I don't want it to be too dark. So just grabbed some more diluted indigo. This one here, this one. Just make sure this is all dry before you do this. This part is not dry 100%. I'm gonna stay away from it and go towards the areas that are dry-ish. But more of that Van Dyke Brown and Burnt Sienna. And I went over the wet area, that's okay. Actually, it's not a bad thing, but uh, just keep in mind that if the area hasn't dried, it's easy to create a bloom. It's not bad because now I have like more color from what you see in the background. Right. Perfect. Last thing I like to do is remove some of the remove some of the sketch lines from the clouds. And it looks so much better when you can do that. So thank you so much guys. I hope you enjoyed this class. And again, I use my flat three quarter size brush and then a round eight brush. These are golden two series and this is round eight golden one series. These brushes are available now in my Etsy shop. Thanks guys.